Yo, homie, got you some. Boom. What is that? This oh, right. is an EDC tray by Hilltop EDC. So you put your goodies in. Check it out. It's kind of cool. Phone and it charges it. And then all your awesomeness. Flashlight. Okay. What do you got? Killing pen. Knife. And wallet. Your awesomeness goes here. I'm gonna put my phone down. That's literally the worst background ever. No, that's ever. me looking tactical. Oh, I just got my keys. Uh, I got my killing pen. That's not a killing this pen. This is a killing pen. This is this is something a pawn shop wouldn't even No, know. no, no. Got my chopsticks for my Chinese Do you carry food. those every day? Every day. And I got some chapstick. Aloha coconut. Yeah, okay. Oh. You're not worthy no. of this. You're not worthy of this. <laughs> I really liked forget it. it. No, forget it. Go get some real ABC. You carry where's your weapons, your guns. Look, weapons. Oh, I got, I got, um, I do have one more thing. I got this little fidget spinner. You're gonna really like that. You're gonna wanna use that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hey folks, I am joined. By the lovely Mrs. Poet. Hey. Yes, you are. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, we're knocking out a video that's highly sought after and requested by you guys, and it's how do you get your spouse into shooting? My wife wasn't from a defensive mindset. She didn't grow up with a culture of guns, and now she carries concealed. So, uh, what we're not trying to do is get get them from like uh, A to Z to to get them from I'm not interested in guns to become some commando wearing war paint. Right. Although that would be fun. You would look awesome in war paint. Thanks. We got to circle around to that. Anyway, right. back to video we'll for now. Uh, so anyway, let's move them instead from, I'm not interested in that, to, hey, that might be something that would be right. kind of okay. So mm -hmm. we have uh, lower goals. To do that, we're really going to harp on a few things in this video. That shooting and learning guns for self-defense applications is important. It's fun, easy, and doable. Important, yeah. fun, easy, doable. That That's what we're going to uh, go for in this video. But without further ado, I want to hear from you and uh, what's been your journey from being a non-gun carrier to, hey, look at look at this stuff. You, you got, you got. Some, yeah, I'm so, set up. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as John mentioned, um, I never really had the self-defense mindset of carrying my own gun for my personal safety uh, ever until maybe I started hanging out with this guy, you know, in my early 20s and uh, he was fresh out of war. <laughs> so uh, it was in the forefront of your mind and slowly over the years, it started to become important to me. But We've been married uh, about almost 12 years now, and I'd say just within the past two years, it's become very serious for me right. and very important. So you had a gun more accessible to you years before, yes. uh, kind of in the car, stashing a purse in a, a glove box, but now like actually carrying. So it's a whole nother level. So understand that, that we've been on a journey as well, and now yeah. she's farther down the pipeline, but yeah. it, all that to say, hey, maybe be understand that this is a process and you can't like put your spouse in a headlock and make them <laughs> you could but there's repercussions <laughs> there's for that. you don't want to yeah. do that that's dumb yeah. so quit being such a thug goon and understand you can't make don't them into it but you can do stuff to to help encourage that so it's an easier process so don't be a bull in a china shop you dumb idiot instead allow miss poets to tell you how to uh, approach uh, your spouse, right? Yeah. How's that? Yeah. So that's um, good. you weren't really of the defensive mindset. Now you're very much in the defensive mindset. Your mm -hmm. mindset's even more impressive than whatever you can do uh, with this firearm. So yeah. in college and high school, where were you in terms of head on a swivel stuff? Yeah, just oblivious. Um, you know, putting myself in situations like downtown and big cities, out with the girls for a party or uh, traveling by myself, um, I would at least have a gun in the car. But uh, that mindset wasn't there. I was never anticipating uh, some kind of situation or dangers that could happen to me. It just did not cross my mind. Like I said, until John started slowly helping make me be more aware of what's going on in the world today and that I was a target. Um, I think most women are targets. And um, I think you're especially more vulnerable if you don't realize that. 
right. you know, first step is realizing you're a target. And right. then, yeah, going from there. So um, then what really uh, changed for me to go from oblivious and then gun in the car and kind of thinking about it, uh, if I was ever traveling alone or in a, the city by myself, something like that, is that you started traveling more. And so I would be at home alone, and I started learning what you were teaching me for home defense. Yeah. And I was home with my young kids, and so little by little, he would I think we'll get into this later, but you'd take a few minutes here and there and help me start thinking about, okay, if this happens, I do that. And so it was more of a preparedness and a readiness. And uh, for me, I wasn't ready to wrap my mind around having my own personal firearm when my kids were very small. I know some of you already do that. Hats off to you. That's awesome. You probably should. Uh, but for me, when my kids were in diapers, I could not just wrap my head around one more thing of now I've got to keep a gun uh, separate from them. So just in the past two years when our kids are older and you travel, I've realized this is a priority. Yeah. And um, I can't save you. I'm not around. Yeah. And, and uh, most bad guys know that, hey, middle of the day or uh, they can count cars pretty easily. It, they'll attack. They'll they'll invade homes when the husband's not home. And right. so you can't hope that th the cops will just magically show up within that five, ten minute window. Usually they show up to do a report after the fact. And I'm not there to protect and save. So it really comes down to you are your kid's best chance of survival. You right. are your best chance of not being uh, raped or being a victim or, or anything in the world. Right. A violent, dangerous place as much as we would like to ignore it. Check out the news. It's happening. Why couldn't it happen to you? Absolutely. Right? And just to make it even more relatable, it, it's not about you being you being a woman who's married or have children. It's just that you're a target. And so if you're just out during the day or shopping or at the grocery store or getting gas, like I said, not married, not with kids, whatever, you're still uh, very susceptible to a violent crime. And are you stopping it? No. Oh, and realizing that is a lot of the battle. And then training and defending yourself is the rest. So. Very good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Miss Poet already hit on it's important. You're vulnerable. Get armed up. It, it, it is important. Uh, one thing you started to go down the road of uh, mm -hmm. was the doable aspect, mm -hmm. and that's she just didn't have the headspace. She's busy doing all the things that are premium of importance, and so uh, checking that out, I realized, all right, I'm not going to get her out to some big six-hour training session with the war paint and all that cool stuff, which would be what we need to <laughs> circle around. Uh, but uh, anyway, so I'm like, okay, maybe if I could just get one or two minutes to go over a quick plan, what happens if, bam, you hear uh, somebody kick the front door and then kick it again? Take action. What do you do? And so we'd go over all these little micro plans. And so uh, say I have a trip coming up and I would be like, all right, hey, baby, any time for the rest of the day, pick a moment where I can have two minutes of your time to go over some gun stuff and some home defense stuff just so I can sleep better at night while I'm gone. Yeah, Do so it he for would, me. He would uh, tell me ahead of time, okay, in a few hours, we're going to talk about this stuff for five minutes. And so my attitude went from, oh, okay, fine, to, okay, yeah, what else? And then, you know. And so after we started doing more of those micro plans, she started getting it. It was like, okay, grab the AR. And I'm like, all right, safety? Or is it ready to shoot? Is there one in the chamber? She's like, yes, there is. I'm like, good girl. Is the optic on? Oh, yes, it is. What do you have to do? Point, gun on fire, bang, 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 bang. Right. Uh, and so anyway, just all the different pieces of home defense and traveling around. So I just pick one thing or two little things, go over it, and we talk through it, and then we do like a demo. Of like, And then I'd go hit the door a couple of times and, and then watch her take action and go ahead and clear out and do all the stuff that where we could just kind of do a quick little run through. Yeah. And we were in and out real easy. Are so, you already on doable? Because yeah. I wanted to say about empowerment. Well, you said that you said the you didn't have the headspace yeah. for it, and I thought, man, that's a great segue for the segue. for the doable thing. Do you want to go on to the doable, or you want to go back to fun and easy? Go back a, a minute to the important about empowerment. Why don't you go back to important? <laughs> okay, <laughs> what we were talking about last night. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So there's you know a lot of 
there, there's a lot of hype over the buzzword empowerment right now, especially for women, gun culture, this kind of thing. And um, I think one of the biggest ways you can be empowered as a woman is to defend yourself, is not to um, be a guaranteed victim. You at least have a fighting chance against a violent crime against you if you have a firearm of your own. And so this is another reason to go back to the important yeah. parts of uh, what you've been training me and teaching, but just, you know, current events, watching the news, there's shootings at churches, at Waffle House. You could be anywhere at any time of day, totally unsuspecting, and without a firearm, you're just guaranteed a victim. You're literally just sitting there waiting for the attacker for you to come into your room or under your pew, wherever you're hiding. It's terrifying. So... When you're trained and ready with a firearm, at least you have a chance. That is empowering. That is so exciting to me that at least I can fight. I can try. Without that, you're just a sitting duck. Why would you choose that? Why would you choose to just be? Yeah, I think folks don't consciously make the decision. It's like, I don't want to think about that. It's somewhere else. But I'll that be fine. is the decision. All right, good, good point. It is. I guess I was just, I was trying to save these girls out there. <laughs> no, I'm on you. you I'm on you. Blood. Get armed. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's okay. important to carry. Let's, yeah. uh, let's go in order here. So uh, it's fun. Yeah. Do you think it's fun? How, how does a guy make it fun to a spouse? Yeah. So, yeah, I see you're about to go into those yeah, points of uh, those shooting. Points. So we go shooting together pretty regularly now. So at least, uh, yeah, when we can on date night. And it's just short range time sessions. 30 minutes in and, and out. He's go showing me a few things. Set. He's a pretty good trainer. You guys should look him up. He's a pretty good trainer. We, <laughs> and uh, we have fun, and it's good learning, but we're doing drills and talking and flirting. And, you know, I'll shoot a few magazines, and then you try to kiss me, and I'm like, away. No, not really. <laughs> so it just becomes a fun thing to do together. So. Cool. Yeah, so make it fun. What this means, guys, is back off. It's not time to make sure her technique is impeccable. Dude, you big goon. Make sure it's real fun and it's date stuff. And, you know, part of being married is sharing each other's hobbies as, as much. You yeah. know, so uh, Mrs. Poet's into stuff that I don't really care about, but I'm into her and she's into that, so now I'm into that. So, and you just kind of share hobbies. So maybe she's into something. She wants to go do what? What are what are you girls into? What do we what, do? What do you care? Oh, I don't know. We're going to shop. Yay, shopping. And... Hey, great. And I'll come alongside your hobbies and, oh, please, can we go shooting? We'll be in and out real real quick, real easy. But it, yeah. it can be funnish, ish fun. stuff. Just don't make it a huge ordeal where you're, you know, blowing whistles and uh, taking on the person of a, a drill sergeant. Yeah. That's no fun. But and, but as as uh, maybe your spouse who's more experienced or, or boyfriend or friend or dad or whatever is helping train you, then, you know, they might start to get a little impressed at sure. how good you're doing. But what I'm more interested in and when we're moving from I'm not interested to I might be interested, if you try to give them training when they're just kind of dipping their toe in the sure. water, yeah. what, you, what you're proverbially so doing is dunking them underwater when you're like, I just wanted to put my toe in. So it's not a training time. It's you load, you unload, they're a human trigger, tell them the universal fire and safety rules, stand beside them, let them go bang, 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 put gun down, walk away. And you were like... Yes, victorious. Cheer them on. And they didn't yeah. hit the target at all. And you don't care. And you don't Cheer tell them, them all the th stuff they're doing wrong. Yeah. You're just there to have some fun. Yeah. That's it. Make sure they have a great experience. That's yeah. it. And worry about training later. Yeah. And you won't like that, but I'm right. This is the way to do it, you goons. And and you did a great job with me with that when I actually took one of your classes. Mm -hmm. A while back, and uh, John pulled this terrible prank. Please tell him. Yeah, Please so tell him. no one else in the class knew we were married. They didn't know who I was. It was a class of about 10 people. And um, he, it, after the classroom time, uh, it, it's time for him to start giving the demonstrations, I guess, with a student. And so he picks me, of course. I asked for a volunteer. To be the like, volunteer. Did I? I didn't even volunteer. I but I, had, I hadn't me. like talked to her during the class. She was yeah. just one of the students. Yeah. And I was just there learning and, and taking notes and whatever. But 
Then I stand up to be a volunteer and he makes it so awkward. He comes up behind me and starts doing this Patrick Swayze dirty dancing type thing where he puts his arm around me in the class and here's every other student. Every other student is going, oh, like they're waiting for me to slap him or be like, ooh, you, you perv, get off me or whatever. And we just start busting out laughing. I was so And then inappropriate. he's like, oh, this is my wife. And everyone was like relieved. I mean, it was awkward in yeah. there. They're like, oh, that was this is going to be on the news. Pretty later. awkward. So <laughs> They were preparing their statements. <laughs> that was another way you made it fun and more laid back from it, it was one of my fun. first formal gun experiences and, and training. And now that she's into it, we can start doing a little bit more training. But the idea is, hey, now it's all right. Hey, it's important. It's fun. And now let's move into easy and doable. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah. So easy and doable. Hey, again, don't be the hardcore instructor. Let's take baby steps, little consistent deposits over time will reap uh, bigger rewards. Um, I would recommend a small caliber gun on a bigger frame. So if you give her some snub nose 357 with like aluminum that's going to tear her hand off, dude, you are an idiot. No, 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 no. You want something small caliber. So if I was taking someone's like truly her first time and she was a little skittish, I'll give her a little 22 pistol and she'll just tink, 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 tink. And I'm like, that's it. Cool. Not even a pew, pew, pew. Maybe, it's a maybe, tink, 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 tink. I don't tink. see it's that not, much on Instagram. It's not quite a pew, <laughs> tink, pew tink. level. It's tink, tink, tink. But the <laughs> worst thing tink. you could do is give her some big caliber and even a nine or 40, but on a really tiny frame, Bad idea. So remember, at first, we're just showing, hey, it's easy, it's doable, and then we can get into the other stuff. Yeah. So um, anyway, there you go. Small caliber gun with a bigger frame. If you have an, a 9 mil on a bigger gun, that's less felt recoil versus a 9 millimeter on a smaller frame. So you want small caliber, big gun means really easy, fun shooting experience, generally speaking. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, and that. that and remember, the, the stuff that she begins on shooting won't necessarily be the thing she carries someday in the, in the future. Right. This is what Miss Poet uh, carries. She loves this setup. And we'll have a link below in this video to get her blog that she wrote on her exact EDC setup. And this can have all the stuff that you may want to, uh, to get. But we think this is the perfect setup. We like... This is earth shattering, especially this holster. Earth shattering. It is. It, it, this latches to your pants because she rarely wears a belt. Holy cow, this is the hotness. We'll review it in a different video, but I'm excited about that. Yeah. So, uh, small caliber gun on a bigger frame. Uh, Want to say one of these? Yeah, outdoors better. So, over that period of time, those years where I was uh, becoming, you know, warming up more to firearms, there were several times that you took me shooting outdoors and uh, it was really fun. It was just very casual, laid back, you know, let's try this gun, lay, lay that one down, try another one. And yeah. that was really fun. And it's more disarming. Um, your first time in an indoor range, that's okay, but it is a bit overwhelming. And I was talking to a friend about this recently, and um, we both agreed, yeah, outdoors better, um, especially for your first few times because uh, the, it, yeah. just the, the sound and the stress and people around you, the indoor range can be more overwhelming at first. Yeah, because what's going to happen is you're going to end up on lane one, the safest lane, because people right-handed point left. But anyway, uh, over on lane one, and as chance would have it, immediately after y'all set down, someone with an elephant gun is going to yeah. get on lane two yeah. and uh, start rocking and rolling. That concussion is a lot of yeah. the uh, people's bad experiences. It just seems <clears throat> so intimidating, overwhelming, and traumatic. And mm -hmm. so you want it mm -hmm. not super loud. And yeah. so outdoor is better. Uh, also, a shorter range time. You're not there to shoot for hours at a time. You've got one shining purpose, not for you to get good or teach her the paces it's that she have a good time in and out so uh mm -hmm. that's what you want shorter range time and take fun photos for yourselves Absolutely. you know for social media instagram facebook whatever mm -hmm. and and make it a fun you know date night thing or day at the range or mm -hmm. whatever and that's right there if, you go so if you snap a cool picture of her and, and you nail the angle here here's a good angle i'll put it up on screen for you as well if you nail this angle 
Everyone looks good holding a gun at this angle right there. So go ahead and get that one and then encourage her to share it on her social media. And then all of her friends will be like, oh my goodness. And then she'll be like, yeah, I'm a pretty dangerous chick. <laughs> and then she'll be, you'll be like, baby, you look Hashtag smoking, awesome. yeah. sizzling hot. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Let's yeah. add some more paint. And so anyway, yeah. uh, that, that can paint. be, that can be a good thing where, where a uh, little interest starts to snowball. And before yeah. you know it, it's a lot of interest. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, there we go. Uh, as soon as we've made sure that we've been on that journey that, hey, it's important and don't <laughs> nag them to death on this. Nagging them is a really bad idea. A little bit here and there. You can't make them. And if you try to, you're just going to end up with a very angry spouse at you and it'll be your fault for being an idiot. So important. It's fun. It's easy. It's doable. And once you've mastered all that, now it's time to think about getting them their very own firearm set up. Yeah. So uh, what is having your own gun and picked out for you? By the way, the gun shop guy doesn't know what's best for you. They're probably going to give you something terrible, and she doesn't know what's best. She's like, I really like the way that looks. I, I like the way it felt in my hand. Rubbish. Absolutely not. You'll go to a tactical training class, or you'll actually get some training, and the gun that feels good in the gun shop may be terrible. Terrible choice. And you won't know it until you know a little bit late, uh, know a little bit uh, more later. You'll wish later that you had waited and got the good thing. This is typically what I recommend to all females. It is the smallest gun that you can really still fight effectively with. Uh, and if it's a big gun, you won't want to carry it concealed. You'll love to shoot it, but you won't carry it. So this is the kind of the perfect one, and there's some others like it uh, in, in the similar size. So anyway, again, we'll direct you to that blog link where Mrs. Poet shows you her everyday carry her gun, accessories, and this holster that latches to your pants, not to your belt. So pretty groovy. Yeah. Um, but uh, how how do you feel about this? <laughs> how do I feel about it? I like it. It works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I practice with it. I carry it. Uh, it's on my person. It's ready to go. Um, just like last week, I was telling you the story about being out with the kids at a playground, you know, kind of isolated area. Maybe shouldn't have been there in the first place, but... Yeah, there's a suspicious car, and I'm watching the kids with my hand on my gun, and this car, and the kids, my hand on the gun, and ready to go. Yep. And like I said, I've trained on it. I've got it with me. It's on me, and I feel comfortable with it. That's good. So, you know. So kind of once they have pride in their own gun, don't be the goon and be like, Happy anniversary, I bought you a gun. And she's like, I don't want that thing. Uh, once she knows how to operate it and it's kind of hers, that pride in it, that can be real, real cool. So uh, uh, the next thing is to kind of get some training and you're not going to be the end all of her training. Typically, men can't train their wives and if you try to, you're both going to end up very, very upset. So I've been friends with a whole lot of firearms instructors over the years and kind of the rule was is, I mean, they would even drop off spouses uh, in a class that I was <laughs> teaching, uh, you know, in a classroom environment, and I would train, you know, spouses. And, and so typically, you don't train your own spouse. I don't know what it is, but typically your spouse won't want to learn from you, and they'll ask you all, yeah, anyway, there'll be challenges and contention, and you don't want that. So your job is to, hey, important, fun, easy, doable, give them a little bit, keep it fun, and then you can kind of task that out to somebody locally, or uh, maybe you two can take little, little things over time. Mrs. Poet will accept my training, which is good. But one, I do this for a living. I train people around the country for a living. So she has to recognize I'm really right on this. Uh, and two, I make it short, yeah. uh, you know, it's short fun. little sessions and yeah. fun. But even so, uh, I think... She would benefit more from other people instructing, and she's had other instructors teach her, not just me. Uh, but uh, with me, sh her number one goal is look cute to John, right? It's true. Right? Yeah. So anyway, and it, and it works, Yeah. but it's all. distracting from the goal. I mean, we got to push, baby. Like, come on, train, <laughs> shoot. Come on, pre travel look, sale, easy, off and on, easy. We yeah. set that trigger. Yeah. Transition, lead with the eyes. And yeah. Anyway. yeah, very good. Anything else you want to tell them on this? This is a great subject. Mm, I'm pumped. I think we crushed it, right? Yeah. Guys, make sure war you're... Paint. War paint. Just war paint. <laughs> yeah. Let's get some. Uh, give me a kiss right here. Hey, guys, make sure that you no are subscribed. <laughs> uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Like, comment. Uh, tell us where you are on your journey. Share this. That'd be really great. And uh, we'll see you next time. So uh, train hard, train smart, and... 
Stay classy. <laughs> All right, see you.